So here's uh, John Beddington, who's the scientific advisor to the UK government, yeah. and um, okay. we were just in a session on mega trends, most of which are very disturbing. <laughs> And, and you had the, the, the brutal honesty to say there are some aspects of this that we just don't know how to move forward on. But you also had a very clear sense in a short time frame, 10, yep. 15, 20 years, of things that we know with quite a bit of clarity. And, and you, you kind of listed some of the options for going forward. If you could just sort of go over that quickly. For sure. I think the, What's uh, the no-brainer here? Well, I think the, the key thing here is that probably for the next 15 or 20 years, I think things are pretty well determined. And there's three key areas that are determined. Population yeah. growth is one. Um, we are going to reach a further billion people by about 2025. It may be a year earlier, maybe a year later, but that a billion people are going to be there. We also know the distribution of that billion. About 500 million in Africa, about 500 million in Asia. So that's one trend that is just not going to change. Changes in fertility will not affect it much. The second trend is urbanization. There is a massive trend towards people moving into cities in the developing world. And so, for example, those 500 million Africans are likely to be in a thousand cities of about 500,000 people each. Something similar in Asia, except the cities are about a million. Um, so those are two trends that are just not going to change. They're going to be there for the fifth, next 15 or 20 years. The third trend that's going to happening is climate change. And because of the delays in the climate change, so the climate system, what is up there now, the greenhouse gases that are up there now, are going to determine the climate for about 15, 20 years ahead. Even whatever happens um, in terms of the reduction of greenhouse gases or indeed their expansion. So those are the three trends. The fourth one I think is, which I didn't mention in the talk, but I think is there, is I think the world is going to get more prosperous, so the level of consumption will go up. That one is more um, qualitative, and I think it's less determined in a quantitative way because it will depend on GDP growth and so on. The three basic ones are effectively unchanged for the next 15 or 20 years, and they all need, therefore, to be thinking about interventions. Um, but those interventions will have an effect, not in the next 15 years, they'll have an effect subsequent to that. So what that does is it gives you a suite of things to work on and for scientists to focus on, I assume. Very, very much so, and I think what we need to be thinking about is interventions that actually, and there will be a lot of different interventions, how you actually inter intervene to help, for example, food security, driven by population growth, uh, how you intervene to think about water security, driven by the same but also by the urbanization. Although there's a whole series of both scientific and infrastructure investments that need to be done and they can be worked on now and actually in population. Um, if one doesn't intervene in terms of, uh, of uh, thinking about population regulation now, um, you're going to be then looking later in the century to major problems. So it's arguable there's almost a tipping point now in which even less the problem of human female fertility is addressed, then we could be looking at very, very large populations as we move through the century.